Hey guys, welcome to HipQ's History. We're not doing a history lecture. We're actually doing a vlog contribution to the Q blog, uh, which is an awesome organization which is dedicated to the mission of inspiring innovation and learning. And that's what we're all about here at HipQ's History. So first I want to thank Doug Robertson, AKA the weird teacher, one of my Twitter peeps, who is giving me this awesome opportunity. So I'm gonna jump right into it if you don't know who I am. My name is Keith Hughes, a 15 year veteran in the Buffalo Public School System. I've taught history. I'm currently an ed tech coach. I also run a YouTube channel called Hip Hughes History and I'm an adjunct professor right here at the University of Buffalo where I teach new literacies. But I wanna dive right into kind of my pragmatic uh, idea for you guys out there watching and that is what's called a digital video quilt. A little background on digital video, I'm a big believer and multimodality and I think that video production is an ultimate goal for any classroom across any curricular area. Um, I ran an organization through the University of Buffalo called City Voices City Visions which uh, trained hundreds of teachers in this art but one thing we discovered is it's a hard hump to get over. It takes a long time and although it's a super tool in terms of allowing different types of learners to contribute and create a really cool product, a digital video, it takes a long time. So we developed the digital video quilt as a way to kind of form a bridge between people who are interested in doing digital video production but weren't there yet and also to make sure that our kids are active and engaged in our classrooms. So basically what I would do if I'm doing a digital video quilt is first, like any lesson, I would choose my learning objective and this can be a content-based learning objective like what are the causes of the Civil War, or it can be a skill-based learning objective like some kind of common core strand in the younger grades. It really doesn't matter as long as it's important. That's the most important thing. The next thing that I would do is I would use a genre for the film that my class is going to create. Genre is humongous. It is the vehicle that's gonna drive the learning. So I'm thinking about movie trailers and news segments. I'm thinking about public service announcements and info commercials or how-to videos. Something that when you say it to the class, they all understand it. That's key. You're gonna get humongous buy-in and humongous engagement if the kids know what they're going to build. The next thing that you're gonna to have to do is a little bit of work, guys. You're gonna to have to bookend the video, which means you're gonna create the beginning and the end of the video. You can do this with really simple titles and music, or you can be animated. You can pop into the screen. Hey guys, having a hard time trying to figure out photosynthesis, but don't worry, we have the perfect DVD for you. Don't believe me? Take a quick look at some snippets right now. You already understand what's gonna happen. We're gonna have segments that we're gonna assign or through inquiry have students choose to do some type of work on some type of idea under that learning objective, right? So once you have done that, the next thing is make sure the kids know a very little bit about filming. It's not a cinematography class, but you don't wanna produce something that looks like garbage. Make sure that light's behind the camera. Make sure that if kids are standing in front of the camera, they're not standing, standing right in center of the camera because this looks weird. Have them kind of off to one of the thirds. Make sure they're not too far away. Just some simple advice goes a long way because it's going to bring it to that level of authenticity where kids are gonna get even more engaged. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to build a rubric. Look, the rubric's gonna give the dumb thing a grade. That's great, but that's not why I'm building the rubric. I'm building the rubric to make sure that I'm highlighting where students should be making important choices. I'm going to be you know, supporting and facilitating the traditional literacy piece, if they're reading or graphic organizing or researching. I'm going to be facilitating the choice that they make in the backgrounds that they choose, in the tone that they take on, in the vocabulary words that they use, how they illustrate the skill. There's lots of different ways that you can use a rubric but it's muy, muy importante that you get that rubric out there. Then once you go through that process, and that maybe is a different video, we'll link up a video that shows you a little bit more of the technical skill of how to do this, but really all you need is one camera. You need a dumb phone, that's all you need. Because at this point, you can use Web 2.0 like wevideo.com and build the whole thing online for free. Or if you wanna use iMovie or Movie Maker or Final Cut Pro, you can dive into that on your own time. But the goal here is two days baby. A day to plan, a day to film. Maybe three days if you're doing it for the first time. But the, the, the key is at the end you have a product. You have a really cool thing that you can show the class, that you can review, that you can throw on Vialogs and they can do a discussion on, or you can put it into Educanon and put questions into it, or you can just talk about it in class. They're going to watch it, they're going to share it, they're going to own it, and you're going to have kids that are going to want to learn. So I hope that you enjoyed my entry. I don't know if I did it right. And make sure that you visit uh, 
uh, hipfuse.com and check out all the groovy videos that we have going on. Thanks, weird teacher. We'll see you guys on the interwebs.